Hi, I'm Jess. Hi, I'm Kristen. And welcome to Rediscover, a space where we engage in authentic conversation about life as we grow through it and whatever comes up along the way. Nothing is off the table here. We talk about the real stuff, the hard stuff, the beautiful moments, and everything under the sun. Around here, we're always rediscovering, sharing empowering stories, and connecting our hearts and minds with every facet of life. We invite you to be part of the conversation as we broaden our perspectives, release limitations, and grow to create our most joyful and fulfilling lives together. So grab a cup of something cozy as we rediscover all the best parts of you and bring a little magic into your day. Hi, everyone. I'm Jess. Hi, I'm Kristen. (laughs) And welcome back to this month's episode of Rediscover. It's October. The leaves are really starting to change. I'm not just saying that because I'm future projecting. I'm saying that because as I was driving here today, I was like, oh, I know they are peeping out. I know. It's really exciting. Actually, we're recording this technically on September 17th. However, that's pretty early for us. I think for fall, like usually I would say first two weeks of October are like solidly the height of all of the fall colors, but this year they're starting to peak out already. The leaves are changing. Yay. They're doing their thing. But the other cool thing about September 17th, and we didn't even plan this when we planned to record today, but September 17th is the three-year anniversary of Rediscover's release date. Which is wild. That's insane to me. I checked my journal this morning. I use that day one journal app, and it tells you, like, on this day, this is what happened. And I was just breezing through to see. And I just, I didn't realize that today was the anniversary. So happy three years. Yay, happy three years. To both you, Kristen, and to you guys, our listeners. I cannot believe it's been three years so already. Because we're like sitting on the floor. <laughs> we're still sitting on the floor where we and we're started. Still figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, we had a fiasco with our recording devices just now. And I think it's pretty funny because I remember us trying to figure this out initially. Yeah. Like, oh, we're going to figure this out. It's going to be great. Yeah. And we have, obviously. Like, we've done 70-something episodes at this point, and we've recorded all over the world. Literally. And it's funny, like, even randomly on a recording day, like today, like, one of our um, USB ports suddenly gave out on us so we had to get creative I'm glad we figured out what was I'm proud of us for figuring out like and isolating the problem so quickly yes and I'm also glad that the thing that stopped working is like the little USB adapter which should be fairly easy and inexpensive to replace so the lesson here is buy a backup because you never know. Like, I mean, what if you had an external device, like, for work or some project you were doing or something or, like, an external hard drive and you needed to get something off of it quickly? Yeah. So I think having a backup is a good plan, which I have now learned, too. So I'm going to go home and order another one. <laughs> yeah. I do think that is a design flaw of MacBooks is yes, just add a USB port in there for us, please. Like, it is not worth the extra half a centimeter or whatever it is to make it slimmer like I just want functionality and I think it's really inconvenient I agree and then you have to buy extra apparatuses I know and it's not even like it's an apple one either they're not making any profit it's just inconvenient but that's a technological um observation but it's I, I said before when we were figuring it out, I was like, it's good to know that it's been three years and we're still having technical difficulties, but so many people do. And I think the cool thing about Rediscover is it is really portable. Like we can do this from anywhere. So, you know, you being on the other side of the world does not inhibit our ability to put out an episode because so many people, I think, especially pre-COVID who had like really like elite podcasts that like had their own recording space right like they rented space or they had a studio and they have like tables and big equipment and like all of this stuff and then COVID happened they were like oh I guess I got to figure out how to do this at home Mm -hmm. like our setup is very easy to manage I mean we literally do it sitting on the floor so yeah (laughs) why couldn't you do it sitting in an Airbnb and I don't know Germany, maybe? (laughs) Maybe. But no, seriously. And I think that just goes to show sometimes I think we perceive that we need all of these things to make things Mm -hmm. happen. And you just don't. Sometimes you just got to start. 
It's that messy action. Yeah. And I'm glad that we did. I'm glad that we just said, hey, we're going to start a podcast. We're going to call it Rediscover. Yeah. We don't even fully know, like, what that entails yet, Mm -hmm. circa 2020. We've had different methods of how we've created podcast episodes. Like, at first, we just created topic by topic, and Mm -hmm. then we were doing monthly themes, and then now we're just doing authentic stream of consciousness flow. Yeah. And I just think every season of the show has evolved and grown with us and with our styles at the time. Yeah. Not only, you know, podcast wise, but just what were you kind of experiencing in life. And yeah. it's been a good lesson to just kind of do things. And I don't think we've ever really been super outcome based with Rediscover either. It's more so been a creative process and yeah. a community building yeah. experience. And that's really what it is to this day and I think that's just a really cool aspect about it yeah I think we were talking about it on the September episode but about being okay with like not knowing everything and being naive about stuff and I think that it's like that childlike freedom that like lets you do a thing that you don't know a lot about oh you want to play soccer okay like kids don't know how to play soccer until they play soccer kids don't know how to dance until they go to dance lessons like they're just okay with doing it not knowing how they're going to get good at it or if they're going to get good at it. I think it's fun to lean into that sometimes. And as somebody who usually is the opposite, I'm very much somebody who's like, I don't want to do a thing or start a thing unless I think I'm going to be good at it. Unless I think I can control the outcome. And that's such an like adult mindset that we get like thrust onto us as the world shows us from childhood that everyone's not going to be nice to you all the time and things aren't always going to work out the way you want. And all of these little like, truths and realities start setting in and so you lose that courage and you lose Mm -hmm. that willingness to just like go for something and figure it out along the way and stumble your way through it but I think we don't give enough credit to our intuition and we also we put too much store in if it's not perfectly produced and the sound quality isn't like absolutely pristine whatever then it's not worth anything and those technical details matter so little like yeah I don't know. Because the message is really the core of it, right? And if the message hits one person that it was supposed to reach on that day, who cares about how it was recorded or where it was recorded or, you know, any of the external factors of it all? I just, I think that's really the point and that's the why, you know, like, why are you doing something? And for me, like, that's always been a why of rediscover is sharing our stories, Mm -hmm. rediscovering what lights us up, what keeps us moving forward on our paths, what we've discovered to this point, and then sharing that with people so you can know, number one, you're not alone experiencing these seemed nuances of life, even though they kind of turn into universal experiences as so we've learned. And just number two, to just make you feel okay with being human and knowing that it's okay if you are stumbling along the way. Like, that's where you learn. And that's where you may propel into something that is so aligned to you. But if you didn't take those steps with the messy action, with the things that maybe they didn't turn into anything, but you had fun while you were doing it, that's where the living is. It's It's been a fun three years. It has. It's... Yeah, it's interesting to think about the way that the style has evolved and the things that we thought mattered then. Like, I remember how much we used to obsess over, like, editing. Like, why do I say this so much? And we used to obsess about, like, cutting a lot of those moments out because we thought that would be disruptive to listen to. And maybe it is, and I'm sorry if it is, but it really took away, like, ultimately we decided that we thought it took away from the authenticity a little bit. And then, you know, those kind of core pillars of rediscover have to be the filter that we use for every decision. So our, when we had our like little regroup in the winter before we came back for this season, I was like, I think that I want to throw the rule book out the window. I think that focusing so much on editing those moments out is taking away from the authenticity of it. And the authenticity of it is more important than us sounding extremely polished or like scripted or like everything that we're saying was premeditated because it's not like we are actually just sitting down and hitting record and sometimes we'll have like something we want to touch on like you know getting engaged or travel plans or whatever like 
big life moments that we want to toss out there. But most of the time it's just like, okay, we know we want to throw those things in there, Mm -hmm. but we'll just kind of see where it goes. Yeah. And everything has just started to evolve really organically. Mm -hmm. When we were having a conversation before we started recording this sort of like being an observer. Yes. I feel like it's really aligned with that because it's not about this, like rediscover isn't about, knowing everything right off the bat or having it all figured out. Like we can sort of just sit back and like take in what's going on and then be like, okay, what is this telling me? But you don't necessarily have to go in guns a blazing. Like, well, I already have these thoughts and here's why they matter. And yeah, everybody needs to listen because we're figuring it out along with everybody else. Yeah. Listening to you say that, I think a core pillar of rediscover is just, humanity Mm -hmm. the human experience yeah being a human being and I was listening to something earlier this morning and it was just talking about how we are a tiny little speck like being a human being and coming into this life that we do we can only see a tiny little speck of a tiny little corner Mm -hmm. of a gigantic world number one but then there's more than just the world right Right. but we have these expectations that we need to have it all figured out it's hilarious it's so silly like we could see a tiny 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 little perspective of green right right but then if you zoom out to the biggest perspective you can it could be like a gigantic green field in a land mass of you know and you're looking at a blade of grass and you're looking at one blade of grass like imagine how Ants think that their whole lives and their whole little colonies are everything. And they're so small from our perspective. Mm -hmm. So how small is our perspective to things that are bigger than us? Yeah. It's very freeing to think about. I think there are two ways you could take that. And I actually saw someone post something. She was in Iceland. And she goes, I love places that make me feel small. Yes, me too. And I was like, (laughs) yes. Okay, when you're in when you're hiking in the woods and there are huge, super tall trees around you and you feel small and not in a way that makes you feel insignificant, but in a way that makes you feel like all of these things that I thought were huge and overwhelming and detrimental, they're not. They're actually small in the grand scheme of this universe of giant things that Mm -hmm. are so much bigger than all of my problems and all of my worries, even all the good things, right? Yeah. Because everything is temporary and nothing is as big as we think it is. And so it's very humbling. And I think, I don't know, it just makes me feel at peace to know, yeah. like, this thing that I think that I'm I'm the only person who has to deal with this and why is it always me? Or, like, why can't I, whatever, why can't I solve this problem? There are probably lots of other people in a similar situation yeah. who are thinking the same thing. And the reality is that none of it's as big as it seems. Yeah. I almost like that feeling of insignificance. Yes. I'm so, it's so <laughs> because, weird because we think of insignificance as a, as a bad a thing, negative right? Thing, yeah. But I'm like, oh, I'm liberated. Mm-hmm. What I'm dealing with, it's not really that important yeah. in the grand scheme. And, you know, I kind of look at all of these environments. Like, mm-hmm. I being the earth sign that I am and I'm like as I'm getting older too I'm just like obsessed with being anything nature natural same you know and seeing all different landscapes too whether it be like an ocean or a lake Mm -hmm. or a mountain or a hillside or a rainforest or a frozen tundra whatever it is Mm -hmm. but it's like even if you just isolate one little part of that there's so much going on all completely operated by a source energy of god or whatever it is like and that's insane to me and i'm like okay so that must that's flowing through that tree that's growing over there right and that's also flowing through me but i have con i have a different sense of consciousness than the tree does right so it's like am i just like growing right and so is the tree and everything in the tree is divinely perfect and the tree doesn't question why it grows why the leaves come and go Right. But be- because we're human and, like, we're in this like, human experience, we do question those things. And that's yeah. fine because that's, like, the deal, right? right? Like, that's the whole point yeah. of this. But it's so freeing to know, like, whether I get upset and question and agonize over this or if I just surrender to it and let go of my leaves like the tree does. Mm-hmm. 
it's still flowing. I'm going to grow anyway. Yeah. If I worry about it, I'm going to grow anyway. If I'm at peace about it, I'm going to grow anyway. If the outcome is the same, yeah, then that can help you in those really overwhelming moments to just have a moment to like, just like be a tree for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> just think like a tree. And I think we've used that metaphor before yeah. and it still stands strong, no pun intended, but like <laughs> it really does. And it's a good visual. It is. To feel rooted and grounded and... Yeah. I mean, I'm not an earth sign. I'm all air, yeah. literally all air signs. Yeah. And for me, it's helpful because I feel like it is hard to feel that sometimes. Mm-hmm. And that is why I like to be in nature because I have to go and look for tangible representations of that feeling because it's very easy for me to get caught up here Yeah, in this sort of like swirling storm cloud. And like, didn't Anthony say something yesterday? Like, oh, you do listen to me when yeah. I say, like, oh, we were talking about money and, you Being know, a tool. financial worries. And Anthony always says money is just a tool. Money is a tool. Like, Which it is. You know, when an expense comes up that we weren't anticipating or something costs more than we thought it was going to or whatever. Everyone faces this. And so it's just a perspective I never heard before because I grew up not in a financially necessarily, like, extremely insecure environment, but one where it was always a stressful topic of conversation. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely developed a very stress oriented mindset about money. Like anything about money was stressful. I never wanted people to ask how much money I made. I didn't want to know like any time that money would come up, I would get really, it was just a trigger for me. Yeah. And so Anthony's perspective being like, it's just a tool. It's literally a thing that we use so that we can do this or that or accomplish whatever. And it is a fluid thing. Mm -hmm. And when he said yesterday, he said, oh, you do listen to me, like, about me, because he'll try to say that to me in moments where I'm like, I just don't know how we're going to pay for this, blah, 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 and I'm swirling and spiraling in my little storm cloud, and he's trying to bring me back down. <laughs> so it was cool to have that moment where he's like, oh, what I say does resonate, because it does. I just need some time to let it settle mm-hmm. in me as, like, truth, and that's coming back to like the being grounded thing like that's when I need to go look for opportunities to feel grounded Mm -hmm. and get out of my head and come back down yeah because I think I think the term like having your head in the clouds which I've definitely been told like that has been said to me a lot in my life refers to like daydreaming or like disassociating or like living in an alternate reality and those things have definitely been true for me at certain points in life but I think it's also you know, just being lost in your thoughts, in your head. And Mm. I I feel that way a lot of the time. So it's good to have friends like Jess, (laughs) honestly, (laughs) who help to keep you grounded or to remind you that, you know, like Anthony, he's a water sign and he's constantly reminding me that things are fluid. Money is fluid. Situations (laughs) are fluid. He always says like everything is temporary, even the good things. And the first time he said that, I was like, well, that's a depressing thought. (laughs) But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, okay, this is good. Because if everything is fluid, even the good things and everything is temporary, then it is forcing me to be present in the good moments because I know they won't last and to feel comfort in the difficult moments because I know they won't last. Yeah. So it's cool. Have you watched The Good Place? Yeah. So it's on Netflix, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you know the, have you watched the finale? No. I've watched like- a couple of episodes of it. It's okay. in my, like, Netflix continue watching. Okay. Well, I won't, like, go into specifics because, honestly, it's been a while since I've watched it. But there was some sort of concept about how there was the choice to be immortal and mm-hmm. just continue living mm-hmm. on and on and on and on with good things. Like, this is great. Like, we can just keep living and this is good and yeah. whatever. And I think one of the characters got to a point where they were like – you know, this is great, but it's not special because there's no end to it. And I know it's just going to keep going and going and going and going. And they were like, the whole beauty of life and living and experiencing these good things is like knowing that they're going to come to an end. I said it's ephemeral. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it is sad because it's like, obviously we just want things to be good all the time. And we would prefer that and just have never ending. But like, that's really the beauty of everything is that it's temporary, right? Like if it just kept going and going and going, that would be so great. But it also, I think realistically, if you were in that situation, it would be like, all right, 
there's just no end of anything. It would start to feel mundane. Yeah. Because I think the character was like having parties all the time it's and like just like Barbie Land. enjoying it. It's Barbie <laughs> Land forever, which is so like sounds fun right now because obviously we live in the more temporary structure of reality. Right. But I don't know. It just it kind of made things click for me like that. There is so much beauty in having the temporary aspect of life. Yeah. And the hard part is, like, when we have to let go of it, like, the grief of it can be so strong. Mm -hmm. But if knowing in the moment how beautiful this experience is Mm -hmm. and knowing that, yeah, it will end someday, like, it just can make you be so in love with the moment and not everywhere else except for here. Yeah. I think I was thinking that with pets, it's like, would I not get a pet just because I know that they're going to only last 10 to 15 or even less years? I actually, I dated someone who shall not be named (laughs) for uh, quite some time. Mm -hmm. And that was a conversation we had because I have had dogs for a lot of my life and I want a dog. And so like I wanted a dog. I still want to have my own someday when I'm not living in a million places. <laughs> and this person was adamant that the reason they did not want to have a dog or a cat or a pet was because they die. Like, I don't want to deal with getting attached to something that's going to leave. I know. And after the, a short time. the ironic part about that is like, no matter what it is in life, it's mm-hmm. anything you're attached to, which is more than just like an yes. animal. Yeah. Is you know, going to eventually shift or change or leave or die or whatever. And I think if I were the person that I am now, I would have seen that as, if not a red flag, perhaps a beige one. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Maybe like, because like terracotta. (laughs) Because it's understandable. Because I then realized that this person, their capacity for love was actually so diminished and honestly like, held back by this fear of loss to the Mm -hmm. point where they literally couldn't love anyone or anything or invest any of their time or emotional energy into someone or something because Because, of fear. Yeah. So love equaled attachment and Mm -hmm. like what that thing can like Mm -hmm. supply for them. And if it's gone, then it's pain and suffering versus just open, unconditional love for what it is now. And then even when they're gone, because what they say, like when, people or animals or anything are gone their memory remains and their love remains for them Mm -hmm. and that's what is left right and And can live on that is both the beautiful and like tragic part of grief yeah having to cope with feeling joy and sadness simultaneously because they're so dichotomous like i'm so grateful for all of these years i had with this person and all these memories that we made together but they're gone now and this is all i have left and having to contend with that And I think it's like the age old, is it better to have loved and lost or never to have loved at all? And I think most people, if they're being honest with themselves, will agree that it's better to love and lose. Yeah. Because that's having a human experience that's authentic and true. And you can just learn so much in the loss. And like, I hate going through it. Like, who Mm -hmm. doesn't? It's painful and awful. And it can be debilitating sometimes. But like... The, um, the losses that I have gone through in my life, I've grown through them mm-hmm. and I feel more capable. Every time it happens, it teaches me to let go a little bit more and it teaches me, you know, to release attachments and like let go of the suffering and like unplug a little bit mm-hmm. from this, again, this tiny little perspective of all that I can see mm-hmm. right now and see like we are all connected, like a law of oneness truly does exist. Like everything is connected. Mm-hmm no matter whether it's physical and tangible or not. But I don't know. I think it's like a core lesson that we're supposed to learn through this journey. And it's a tough one, but... Yeah. I think that's part of the reason why the mundane all the time doesn't make sense for us because humans have capacity for much more than that. We have capacity to grieve and feel joy and to overcome challenging circumstances and celebrate that success like all that whole spectrum is a gift yeah and a true human experience explores all of it Mm -hmm. and so having just like 
a good average day every day wouldn't feel fulfilling because we wouldn't ever have to like rise to an occasion. We wouldn't ever have to test our strengths. We would never have to experience moments of coming back to ourselves and like the Simba moment <laughs> when yeah. he sees Mufasa in the stars. And I'm getting and chills like, even thinking of that. Remember who you are, yeah. like having to come back to yourself and, and, and rediscover who you are literally in the moments because the moments that we do that are the moments that are super triumphant and super tragic, right? Yeah. Like those extreme spaces are where we really realize our strengths and our weaknesses and learn the most about ourselves and maybe discover something new, but always it, through this, you know, lens of like, this is who I am mm-hmm. at my core. And those are the things that carry you through all of the spectrum Mm -hmm. and sort of become shoulders to lean on like all of these other parts of your identity yeah and you wouldn't have that if you were just in the mundane every day no one would call you strong or resilient or resourceful or whatever because you would have never had to have proven any of those things yeah to yourself or anybody else but mostly to yourself Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and sometimes it's like I don't want to be the strong and resilient one because it's tiring, right? Yeah, I'm tired. (laughs) But at the end of the day, like, I think everyone is going to go through some sort of hoop they have to jump Mm -hmm. through in life, you know? We live in, like, this age of seeing perfection on social media all the time. Mm -hmm. And I know we talk about this constantly, but it's, like, if, you know, you're seeing these, like, perfect examples all the time, it's, like, every single person is human. Like, you cannot expect that their whole life just looks like this tiny little snapshot of it. It's almost funny to me that we still keep the charade up though. Like, I think we keep talking about it because it keeps being relevant, but I think that sometimes I'm like, isn't it so cute? They're all just out here. Like, look at this cute thing. Look at this. Like, yeah. So like, I want (laughs) to, I want to like pick that apart though, because like, of course, so we've been on social media for 10, 10 years at least. Right. Whenever 2012, 2013, I think I joined Instagram and it was around that time. And so, like, of course, like, I know that I've done this and I know that I've shared, I share photos that are very picturesque and fun and happy and whatever. Because I was going through and you know how people do those, like, expectation versus reality of what was really going on in this photo. And I was making a post for Lemon 8, which is that other app, which I've been creating a lot for which has been really fun because it's, like, expanding than just, like, what I normally do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, yeah, I was making a post that was very expectation versus what was actually happening in the picture. And it's, like, in this picture, I was so jet-lagged, I thought I was going to, like, collapse and fall over. In this picture, I was, like, emotionally, like, hungover because we, like, got into, like, a spat about something the night mm-hmm. before. In this picture, I was having a stomach flare, period cramps, sore throat, like exhaustion, anxiety, like all these things. Mm-hmm. And the pictures look so mm-hmm. nice and so pretty. And everyone's like, oh, it's so beautiful. You look so great. Blah, 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 blah. So it makes me just kind of wonder because like, so we post those and like, I love them. Like, I think that they're great pictures. Yeah. And they're great memories to have. I, being a tourist, again, like I love anything aesthetically right. beautiful and pleasing. Like right. I just have an eye for like finding beautiful things and I will capture that through photography a lot of the time. So it's, it is confusing. Like how do you find the balance of like, is it okay to just share snapshots because that feels like joyful to you? Yeah. And are people just misconceiving that? Like, I guess you're not really responsible for how people conceive what you post. Yeah. As long as it feels, because Honestly, I don't have a ton of time to, like, post every aspect of my life. Right. If I just want to post, like, some snapshots here and there that I think are beautiful, then I want to do that. Do we just take on the perception that other people are living perfection? And it's not actually about what people are sharing. It's really about our projection of that. I think purpose has to come into the conversation because I think that... It goes both. It's a two-way street, right? Mm -hmm. Your purpose and intention behind what you're posting and the other person's purpose and intention for consuming it. Because consuming your content is their choice. And that's something you have to remember. I think everyone has to remember that when they're getting too caught up in what other people think. 
Yeah. That person consuming your content is their choice. You did not force them to be here. I have said this for literal years when, when people would say nasty things or whatever on social media, especially like back in the day, um, when I was actually, you know, like posting regularly. I know. <laughs> and I was posting a lot more about my personal life on social media yeah. at the time. I would just say, I didn't ask you to be here. Yeah. I did not ask you to be here. This isn't jury duty. You didn't right. have to show up. <laughs> you can, you are literally free to go. The door is wide open. Yeah. So their purpose and intention for consuming your content. I especially think this about like, like aesthetic apartment tours and home tours and stuff. I love like little reels where it's like, this is your cute fireplace and whatever. I just love it. I love I seeing think it's spaces comfy. like that. Yeah. But I'm not looking at it like, what is this person's life like? I'm usually looking at like, ooh, I like that chair or that candle or whatever. And maybe that is like consumerist of me. I don't know. I'm not necessarily like adding to cart as I'm going. It's just, it's a nice little daydream, like cozy by this person's fireplace, whatever. And not in an envious way, just in a like, how beautiful is that kind of way? Like a little, yeah, like a little escape. It's almost cinematic to me. It's almost like reading a poem or a book that takes you out of yourself. Yeah. Nobody writes a novel and says like, oh, I hope the people reading this aren't jealous of the protagonist's life because it's a fictional yeah. novel. Yeah. You use it as an escape. You know, they say like if you read a thousand books, you've lived a thousand lives. Like it's just fun. So I think social media, when well-intentioned on both sides, is an extension of that. It's just yeah. a fun little escape. It's a joyful thing. And as a person posting, it can be joyful for you to, like we've said before, relive your memories exactly, and post them. Mm -hmm. And with the intention either being to educate, because you obviously do that because you're giving people great advice about traveling and great tips and things like that. That's all very useful and applicable. Yeah. Or it's just like, hey, this was a beautiful thing that happened and all the stars line and everything was awesome and I'm excited about it. Yeah. That's okay too. Yeah. I think it's just if you're approaching it from the mindset of I'm consuming all this content because I'm you know, unhappy with my life and my situation and I'm escaping into someone else's reality, that's a slippery slope because that has the scary green monster like creeping up its back, you know, yeah. and that can really quickly take a negative turn. So I think it's just what is the purpose behind it and what is the purpose for consuming it? And whenever I do my like deep purges where I unfollow a lot of people, that is what I'm like, that is the yeah. narrative going through my head. Like, okay, this person? Do I know them in real life? Do we talk regularly? And if I don't know them in real life, why am I following Does them? Does their content bring a level of joy, yeah. inspiration, creativity yeah. to my space? I will unfollow accounts that I've followed for years just because I'm suddenly realizing like one day I'll see a post from them pop up and I'm like, I don't know what this is doing for me. Like, yeah. it's not bad. It's not negative. It's just not really making me feel inspired or curious or anything yeah. that should be the reason why I'm here. Yeah. So it's literally like going to Barnes and Noble and buying a new book to read. Like, yeah. does this story resonate with me? Is it going to be entertaining or inspiring or interesting? If not, then I'm going to put it back on the shelf yeah. and then go to the next one. Yeah. So I don't know. I try to look at it that way because as someone who loves to read, there are moments where I'm like scrolling and I'm like, I want to read right now. Why am I not reading right now instead yeah. of doing this? I try to look at it through that lens because if I'm going to have screen time, then I want it to be for the same purpose. Yeah. As something that would probably open my mind a little bit more. Yeah. I actually have been doing 10 days detox from social media wow which has been amazing what day are so you far. i think five so i'm halfway wow. through it's so much easier than i thought i found an app that's actually really helpful and it's on my phone right now <laughs> and i don't remember what it's called mm -hmm. it basically will like you can select what apps it wants you mm -hmm. to lock and then you need to like wait five to ten seconds for it to unlock so you have, so you a, have moment. To, a moment and yeah. it will ask you like, is this important right now? Or like whatever question That's you want awesome. to ask you. I truly think social media is the same as an addiction to like a substance. Yeah. Obviously it's not as like physical, but my autonomic nervous system is like, it gets thrown off without right. it. And 
I was like, okay, I just need to take a hard reset because yep. I'm waking up in the morning and scrolling. I'm working and scrolling on every free moment that I have. Mm-hmm. I'm scrolling when I'm in the bathroom, on the couch, when I'm watching a movie, when I'm talking to my partner mm-hmm. in the car. It's like, mm-hmm. this is freaking ridiculous. And like, what is it, what is it amounting to? Yeah. And it's a harsh, like, truth to, like, say to myself, it's out of control. Because you don't think it is because it's just a new moment. But it's like, oh, your screen time was six hours this week. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's so much. That's wild. It's wild. So, yeah, I just kind of decided to do a little reset. It's like a detox of, you know, the mind. But it's I felt really good about it and really, I don't know. I still fill up my whole day. It's like, how did I have time to scroll? Like when I'm still doing so much, you know? So it's not like I'm here to report like, oh, I suddenly have so much more time in my day because I really don't. There's just so many things to do all the time. Right. But I think my mind is clearer and I don't feel as much of an attachment to something. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not as irritable feeling of like, oh, I need this right now. Like I need a quick hit of dopamine. Mm -hmm. And it is hard because I think I do struggle with like dopamine or serotonin like production in my brain just from all of the, you know, like mold really does mess with your neurotransmitters and like obviously that was so many years ago now but it's still like those patterns and any sort of brain patterns that you develop you really have to consciously kind of yeah rewire yourself so it's been good but yeah and I know I was talking to you about this last time but I don't know for the first time in 10 years like I just don't feel like I want to be posting as much as I used to anymore and maybe that's because I'm in Buffalo right now and even when we go back out to travel next time, I'm it it's confusing. Like and who knows what will actually happen by the time this happens. But yeah. but then there's also the part of me that's like, do I even want to post at all? Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. And that is something to really look into because yeah. there's the thought of okay, well, number one, maybe I'm just maybe my soul is just calling for me to like just be and yeah. enjoy and relish in the moment. Maybe I need a creative pause, which I've really kind of been taking like right now, but mm-hmm. who knows, you know, when I'm gone again. But right. then there's the other part of me that's like, I do think it's really amazing and incredible when people find inspiration from like just me existing and doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And then they, take something that inspired them and implement that into their life. And that's why I have always posted, like, Mm -hmm. just to share and create community and have something to connect over with people, but also to share a story and maybe inspire something, like, from within someone. Like, that moment of someone sees something, they're like, oh, that resonates with me, and then they create that in Mm -hmm. their reality, that makes me excited. Yeah. And that is really cool. So that's why I just don't know, because... Maybe I'm not supposed to know yet. Maybe I'll just go back to my normal routine. Maybe I'll take a total pivot. Maybe I'll just go completely blank. I don't know. It's so interesting to be at this fork in the road. Yeah, I think releasing yourself from any obligation to commit to any one, like, hard decision is a good idea. Like, I guess I would encourage you to do that. Like, if you feel like posting when you go back out, then, like... Do, do it. it. But yeah. don't feel like, okay, I posted once and we're here. So now I have to post every day or every week. Or now I have to tell them what we're doing next. Like, you don't. Yeah. And I think releasing myself from that helped a lot. Because there does seem <clears throat> to be this, like, inherent structure. Right? Yeah. And we love structure. We thrive on structure. I am a girly who likes organization and structure. Yeah. <laughs> and so I always was like, well, I'm doing this thing this weekend and then next weekend. And I have to post about this and this. And I would literally go through my camera roll and be like, what notable things happen? I have to post about them in chronological Chronological succession and then I think it was around honestly when I changed my like you were princess Jess and I was Disney from hey to all of you who have been around for that long (laughs) we love you love you I truly do like I love her I love Princess Jess. I, I love Disney Frump. I love I love, I love them. them. <laughs> I love their energy. I love their commitment to just like life being in it. But I remember I was coming back from a trip to California and like that night, I don't know what happened. I was just like I'm changing my Instagram name. 
Like, I'm just doing it. Yeah. And I don't exactly remember how, like, the Positively Kristen thing came out. And a lot of people thought at first that it was, like, I'm so positive. Yeah. And it's not – that's not where my brain went <laughs> at all. And I was, like, ah, crap. It was positively as in absolutely, as in undeniably, as in authentically. Yeah. Like, that was where my brain was going with it. And I just – I just, like, it came to me – that day, like, I don't yeah. know when, and I was like, that's it, I'm going with it, whatever. No explanation, yeah. no, like, I think I, like, made a post and was like, yeah, this is it, it happened. It's so funny Hope that you're okay with it. <laughs> you remember where you were, because I remember where I yeah. was, too, when I changed mine. I was in my dorm room in college, and I was just like, I'm no longer Princess Jess. Yeah. And it was just, it was just a surefire, like, yeah. all right, this is a Here new chapter. And I feel that happening now, which is weird. And I don't know if it's yeah. necessarily a name change, but there's an energy change. But it wasn't just a name change then either. Yeah. And I felt that then too. I was like, this is a pivotal moment. This is where my yeah. life has, like, I am realizing the transition my life is in, the turns that I'm taking, and the ways that all of these other things have become more poignant in my life than this other thing that used to be kind of the center of my world yeah um it's like disidentifying from all of these things that we thought were us but they're not they never were us and they like they were just things that we did or things that we part of the journey they we experienced and they we were we existed before and we exist after and they meant a lot at the time but like they're not our whole identity like if we lose them we're okay yeah Yeah. and i think i know and i think the Part of the, like, change, the name change for me, like, that positively thing, I was like, so now there are no rules. Like, I really, it takes a lot for me to liberate myself, but once I do it, I'm like, fuck all of you, I'm doing what I want. Yeah. And so I had this moment where I was like, okay, now there are no rules, I can post what I want when I want, and I don't have to if I don't want to. And I've really leaned into that. Like, I didn't post anything for over a month before I was like, oh, Anthony and I got engaged. That feels like a thing I want to post about. Yeah. And it does, because that's a little moment that I can come back to, and cool. And like, all the lovely things people said in the comments, like... Those are nice and not because of the validation, but because I can see like, here are all the people that were in my life in that moment. Like I can go back and look at that, which is really special. But before that I was like, there was like a point in the summer where I was like, I have all these like beautiful photos from summer. And like, I feel like I have a lot of things to say about summer because I love summer. So I'm going to post because I feel like I have something to say Yeah. because I am a caption girly. Yeah. (laughs) And it's so, it's always been so much less about what's in the photo or the video and so much more about like, please read the caption because that's where I'm coming through. Yeah. I'm, I might be in the photo, but my, my like soul is in the caption. So yeah. If, like, anyone actually wanted to get to know me, that would be where they should go. And Mm -hmm. I think that's the case for anyone who is intentional about posting. Like, I, and with, like, your captions are, like, where I find all the information and the details and everything that's going on. And, like, the little quips of, like, we didn't think this was going to happen. And then we got here and whatever. And I'm, like, hearing it in your voice while I'm reading it. And I'm, like, she's so excited. And that's great. The story, well, that's the whole thing. That's it's the story. Like, because everyone's like, oh, I'm a travel blogger and a podcaster and a blah, 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 blah. And I like, of course, like, I have identified with those titles, mm-hmm. too. I'm not going to say it's, like, my number one. I don't have one title. But one description I do really like is, like, travel storyteller yeah. or just storyteller in general. Because I think, you know, if you look back at Disney blogs that we did or travel posts that I've made or even just, like, videos that I've put out or even in my personal life when I've made like physical tangible books Mm -hmm. or written cards or whatever it's always telling a story it's always like giving space and honor to a moment or a experience yeah yeah and capturing that in words or in photos and words like it's always that yeah and I think that's really where the like meat of everything is um yeah, no, I freaking love, like, that's my favorite thing to share is when it's, like, the synchronicities or the unexpected. Yeah, like, or, the skydiving story is an amazing story because it's there's cool. so much stuff that came together and, like, there's a story arc there. Like, you yeah. grew in that story. You faced a fear. Like, yeah, there, that was, like, very cinematic to both hear you to retell and then to, like, see it later yeah. play out. But I think also social media tries to put you in a box because what does it tell you to do when you create your profile? Pick your name, then pick what category you fall into. Are you a digital creator? Are you a blogger? Are you a videographer? What are you? Pick one from this limited list of things and that's what's going to show up on your profile 
And I'm like, what if I'm just a person who occasionally wants to say things and use images as a catalyst for like telling a story or sharing a thought or whatever? Do you have a category for that? Because I sure as hell don't know what that is. And you know what? Hard. You know what makes it even more like narrowed down is the type of content that quote unquote does well Mm -hmm. is for me Disney. Right. I don't go, I didn't go to Disney for X amount of years or months or whatever. All of a sudden I post reels about going to Disney Mm -hmm. and they pop off and I'm like, great. I'm happy that you like them. Right. And I love Disney and I always have and I always will. But I feel pigeonholed. But I feel like if I'm posting about that and you're blowing that up and I post about anything else like Mm -hmm. Costa Rica like why am I getting five times more views on Mm -hmm. a Disney reel than a Costa Rica one yeah right you know and it's the same the funny thing about it is it's the same layout it's the same day in the life vlog voiceover story right and arguably like it's maybe a more interesting story when we're not at Disney I was gonna say I think that the Disney social media content, like, space is so oversaturated now, which is part of the reason you and I both felt ourselves pivoting away from it years ago was because we were like, oh, this is getting to be too much. And quite frankly, it is a good niche because it's, people are looking for it and it does blow up. Yeah. But it does pigeonhole you. I would argue that Costa Rica is more interesting because there's far less people creating content about Costa Rica in the way that you are that's like, Hey, we went to all these different parts of this place and literally lived there yeah. and did all of these unique things and literally lived there. Here's what that looks like. And yeah. here's what it looks like when you're trying to work remotely and all of these things. And nobody is making content like that for these places. Like it's unique. And you would think that a social media platform that claims to want to let people tell their story yeah. would then affect an algorithm that caters to that and allows the uniqueness to be the thing that helps you to grow instead of just falling into step with everyone else and marching in a little line of ants or soldiers or whatever yeah. to some same goal or doing even like the trending music and all that. It's all so just monotone to me now. It's all just so oversaturated. It's the same thing. You hear the same three songs for a week and then it's, Three different songs next and week. And it's the same basic, relatable text over the top. Yep. And maybe that's why it's been so easy for me. Because I've been, you know, addicted to my phone for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. thought it would be so much harder to step away. Yeah. For ten days. And it's been so easy. Yeah. And maybe it's just because I'm over it. Just, I don't know. Something is shifting. Something's in the wind. Like, Something I don't is. know what it is. And I don't think you're alone. I think, yeah. I, I definitely feel that way. Today, my um my weekly, like, screen time report said my screen time was down 28% from last week. And I was like, yes. Yeah. I was so excited about it. I was like, good. That means I was living this week. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was living, what, um 28% more of the time yeah. I, I spent living than being on my phone. And I also think so many more jobs are like digital now like when you do social media for a living I think it burnt me out of like doing my own because not because it wasn't still fun to like write things or create things or like put a video together or whatever in the rare occasion that I actually do that but I just was like I don't I would rather put my phone down and like go exist in the world yeah and honestly like the amount of time that you need to be a consistent creator like you need to get paid for that. It's a I'm full-time sorry. freaking it's job. It's more than a full-time mm-hmm. job. And, like, I've done I've done that, right, for, yeah. like, the past several years. And it's never been my 100% full-time thing, but I've spent, like, full-time hours mm-hmm. on it just creating, creating, creating. And, you know, I do it because I love it and I mm-hmm. like to capture memories and yeah. photos and whatever because I think that's really – I think it's fun. But there comes a point where it's, like, I want to do this and feel, like – this is like not amounting to something, but like what is like what is the payoff for like what is my reasoning for continuing to do it? And when you're just when you're devoting your free time to the point of just like it making you feel really 
burnt out, yeah. like to your edges, you're just like so frazzled because you have to keep up to continue, continue, continue. It's like, is it worth it? Like, right. would it just be better if I just gave this all up and stepped away? Like, maybe. Yeah. It's possible. Maybe. And maybe there's like a middle ground of it and you don't have to get so extremist with it. But I don't know. I've just really my whole perspective on it has just changed lately. And it's like, where is the coming back down to earth of like real people doing yeah. real things? Like that's why I joined in the first place. That's yeah. why our communities grew in the first place. That's why rediscover hasn't really like changed from the structure that we've, you know, or the core pillars that we yeah. had here because that's the point. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. There's just a lot to think about there and I don't have an answer. I'm really just spitballing and like, yeah, talking. It's it good. Through. To, it's good to talk it through out loud. And I think it's very cool to like, again, capture this moment in time because also there might be people listening right now who are going through the same, like maybe as a creator or just as a person who consumes social media, maybe they're going through the same circumstances and they're having those same conflicted thoughts and so this is helpful for them to hear somebody else you know speaking it out loud and I think that taking a pause is a good thing because you don't have to figure it all out right now but taking a step away to like gain a different perspective and a new vantage point to zoom out a little and see it not so up close and in your face yes is a good way to sort of process like the its value right and see you know, where you want to go with it. And that's probably a different answer for everyone. Yeah. For me, I'm probably just going to keep sticking with my, like, I'm going to post when I feel like posting and not when I don't. It's just, it's just so interesting, like, Mm -hmm. to detach. And again, that observation piece, Mm -hmm. because if I'm, like, looking at this, like, if I'm looking at it, it's like, it would still... Like, for me particularly, I would still love to do that as my full-time job, right? Like, that would be really cool. But I also want to be, like, I want to detach from, like, the need of that happening. Like, if that was to happen, that would be amazing and that would be really cool. And I would be super open to that and thrive with it because I do think that that would align. But I also feel like there's just, it's not a need It's not something that I need to attach to. It's not something that should be taking away from, like, the present of where I am now. You know, like, and I think that's, like, where it gets really sticky with people, like, who are trying to get into that industry and then to that field. It's like, oh, I want to be a creator. I have to, like, dedicate everything to it. And Mm -hmm. I think, you know, part of that is true. Like, yeah, part of of it is you do need to, like, put in the work and the time and the hours and whatever but also there are people people who so effortlessly like fall into the space that Mm -hmm. I didn't even like think about wanting to do that yeah because there's just this level of detachment of like I'm open to life and life is gonna bring to me whatever is like gonna match that yep like the because the intention to just to circle back to this (laughs) corporate circle back corporate circle back the intention to of like original princess Jess into Jessica Faye has always just been personal, like, mm-hmm. life story, like, yeah. A to Z chronological. Like, I'm still doing chronological order in 2023, which is fun, but because it's my scrapbook, right? It's yeah. not, like, anything it's else. It's your life. But wouldn't it be, like, it does kind of excite me to think, like, hmm, I could post about anything from anywhere at any time, mm-hmm. and I don't have a space to do that currently. Right. So, right. it would be fun. That is kind of a freeing thought. It is a freeing thought. So, yeah, yeah, who knows? Love that. It's just a journey. It's like, and it's not even like that important. It is important. Eh. It's important to you. It's important. I guess, but I'm a speck in a giant universe. It's, so whatever. It's important to you. So it is important and relevant and valid. It is unimportant in that it is not a thing you have to spend too much time worrying or thinking about. Exactly. Because it is insignificant to the universe in the sense that it is already solved exactly you just don't know it yet (laughs) and I think that's really cool and a big lesson like I feel like I feel like I have like takeaways every week right and I think this week particularly has been just the fact that like everything is just done like whatever Mm -hmm. dreams we have or whatever goals we want to accomplish or things we want to create like 
in some point of reality in an in the now moment we're going to be experiencing it like it's yeah. done and if it doesn't happen it's because there's something different that's better and yeah. more aligned but i think that's really freeing to know like yeah hmm, i don't have to worry about this like i'll get yeah. there either way like yeah. you said in my um spiritual journey to finding uh the place that i'm in now and and sort of detaching and getting away from the like you know religious catholicism driven mindset of like you have to do this or you won't blank like yeah that fear-mongering mindset i actually found out something very interesting and it's that just what you said um the kind of driving belief in the sort of spiritual space and the like faith that i now claim as my own is that like god doesn't need you to do anything like you don't have to like <laughs> he's inviting you to be a part of the process like like literally rediscover it's just about the process it's not about the outcome the outcome's already decided it's already been done it's already determined like you're just invited to be like part of it it's like letting the kid like help in the kitchen even though like you already know that you're gonna like take over and it's all gonna come out okay but like you're gonna let them get in there and make a mess and get their hands dirty and get sprinkles everywhere because it's fun and it's part of their growth yeah but like you don't need them to do that because you can take over and get it all done exactly it's a co-creation process exactly and i was gonna mention this last episode and i forgot but i'm and i'm still thinking about it so i it's meant to be today um so i did this journal exercise and i think i might have told you about this in like our conversation but i did this journal exercise that had me Think of, like, some big, like, manifestations in my life that have happened, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, some cool things that have happened that are, like, magical. I remember this now. Wow. Yeah. So, I wrote down a few. It's, like, becoming a Jungle Cruise skipper, meeting Steven, um, you know, being a VIP tour guide, being able to, like, coordinate phase one of traveling. Mm -hmm. Like, all these, like, really big milestone pieces of life that, like, came together, Mm -hmm. and there had to be a lot of pieces that came together for these things to actually happen right so i wrote down a list and then the prompt was write down all the things that you physically did and then write down all the things the universe had to coordinate for it to happen and i was like okay so like let's pick one of those things like which one sounds fun okay um coordinating phase one of travel okay so I know all of this, but yeah. I'm like, I'm, I picked that so, one because I remember this process. Yeah. So like, what did I do to coordinate phase one of travel? Well, Steven is already in place. So I know yeah. I had to like, you know, coordinate with my travel buddy, yeah. which is Steven. And we had aligned goals. I'm just picturing Woody like, does everyone have a moving buddy? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, we agreed. We want to travel. Yes. Cool. We just kind of like made that mutual agreement. I had to make money. Mm-hmm book a ticket, book an Airbnb, and pack, pack, and show up to the airport Ugh. and go, right? Like, those are, like, the I'm physical, tired. the physical things yes. that I did, right? So then the things the universe had to coordinate were me and Steven meeting from across the world and, you know, everything to get together so we could date and live together and decide that, right? Yes. So our whole meeting story. Number two coordinating a job that was going to pay for it number for both of you for both of us yeah so it was like meeting a mutual friend getting that connection an open spot on the team whatever yeah and getting his job mine i had two parts to that it was like one getting a movie job which was just it came out of the blue they needed mm-hmm. someone so bad and i lived in the right place at the right time. I had Mm -hmm. freedom to do it. It paid really well. And it just like Mm -hmm. stockpiled anything that I would need. Mm -hmm. And then my other job coming through literally a couple weeks before we were going to phase one, because all of a sudden they were taking remote applicants because COVID was not getting better. And like all of these things that are so like, all of those things are beyond my control, right? Like beyond comprehension of, like, I couldn't plan that. Mm-hmm. Like, I couldn't plan them having openings on the team. I couldn't have planned. I had no clue what I was going to do for work over that summer. Because yeah. I was looking for anything and everything. Yeah. And it was just crazy. And I was like, I don't know how we're going to do this, but we're going to do this. Like, 
And I was even open. I was like, okay, well, if I don't find something before we go, like, I'll just figure out. I'm freelance. I'll do this. I'll take whatever I can find. Mm-hmm. But no, it worked out right before. And yeah. things happen at the 11th hour a lot of the time. Yes. I noticed that so much in life. Yeah. There's like a, it's a law of the universe and I didn't even realize it, but, um, yeah, when you are like taking action, it's like law of unwavering faith. You yeah. are moving in the direction yeah. of this thing and you're like, okay, I'm literally going to jump out of an airplane right now and you're mm-hmm. going to catch me. Mm-hmm. And, but it's like, having so much faith and like there's no other option like this is just what's happening and like whatever happens like I'm just gonna you know rise to the occasion Mm -hmm. and do it you know and obviously you have like backup plans but like they're not really backup plans you would do right it's like okay well if for worst case scenario like this doesn't work out well then I can you know I have family to rely on or friends I can rely on until I get to that point but you know, whatever. It's like, that wasn't even an option at that point. It was like, I'm just doing this and it's going to work. Yeah. And it did at the, again, the 11th hour within a month before. And I'm in that space right now too, where everything actually is really set up well, but I'm like, I'm open to something shifting too. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. And I'll be interested to see how phase two pans out. So It's really exciting. Yeah. But yeah, I love Law of Unwavering Faith, but it's also really scary. It's also really scary. (laughs) Yeah. It's a scary one, but it's really good. There was a, I don't know, it wasn't a series. It was like a day um, over the summer. And certain like, obviously I don't get to go to my church every week because it's in Orlando and I'm not there all the time. But there was like a week that I was back. I had like one week to go after I hadn't been for a month or whatever. And there was this whole thing about like a long obedience in the same direction. Oh, yeah, so Which the is, same thing. Yeah, literally. Th- I mean, that is, like, the unwavering faith thing is, like, kind of a pillar of the whole, like, <laughs> Christianity concept. Like, yeah. you just have to trust that I'm working it out for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I'm doing the work and you're doing the work and we're co-creating together and we're gonna get there. You just have to keep showing up every day. Yeah. And it really is the 11th hour thing because if everything was just handed to us, like, right away, we'd be like, cool. And then that would be, like, our expectation. And then we wouldn't actually really have to put in any of the work and then we wouldn't be fulfilled doing our little part yeah like it's a dance if you told the kid to come help you make the cookies and then you just opened a box that you bought at the store they'd be like wait a minute they'd be so let down because they don't want to eat the cookie out of the box they want to make the cookie and then eat the cookie they made think about chips ahoy versus like a homemade chocolate chip yeah so much more satisfying (laughs) and i love that analogy because you can picture it so clearly and like you've everyone's been a kid excited to like help do the thing or be part of the process and so yeah I think I think that a lot especially lately I'm like okay this is gonna feel really gratifying when it works out because yeah. right now it's super does not yeah <laughs> um but it's still if not like an entirely positive thought it's a hopeful one yeah and that is a hard thing to maintain but I remember, and the reason I asked you to, like, recount that is because I vividly remember you being like, I'm just going to do it, and, and everything's going to work and out. And I was like, it's just going to work out. Yeah. And, yeah, doing that journal exercise, like, if you've never done that, and I've done a lot of journal exercises yeah. over the years. Like, I'm a journal fiend. That one shook me. Like, I've never had one that, like, made things click. Yeah. You know when something just clicks in mm-hmm. your brain? Because you hear it the right way. Yep, and like, at the right time. Yeah, yeah. That journal exercise really did it. It was Because it spelled it out on a piece of paper. Like, here's a column of what has happened. Mm-hmm. Here's a column of what I did. And here's a column of what the universe did. And it's like, I barely did anything. I showed up. Yeah. I, like, I took a step. Yep. Went to a place. I answered a phone call. Right. Like, it's <laughs> I sent my silly little email. <laughs> I know. And it's just, and it's so crazy. Yeah. Because it's just, it's like a domino effect of all these unseen forces that just come together. And we're like, yeah, I went on LinkedIn and I applied for a job or something, you know? And, like, you just hit it at the time. Yeah. And, like, I've had, like, a job where, like, I got the job within a week. And Mm -hmm. my boss was like, oh, you got this job within a week? Like, the hiring process is usually so long. Yeah. Like, how did that happen? Yeah. And I'm like, 
because I know it was divinely orchestrated. Right. Like it was, again, that was an 11th hour situation for me there. Yeah. And she's like, you like seriously? And I'm like, yeah, yeah like, isn't that normal? And she's like, no. That I'm is like, literally oh. my Disney story. Yeah. Right. Like, Cause it's so. I, be. I went to one audition and I literally just used it as an excuse to like go to Disney because I wanted to go at Halloween. And I was like, oh, it's in October. Okay. And I like showed up to one audition. And then all of these people were like, I went to 12. I went to 14. I went to 20. I'm like, and like extremely talented, like beautiful people too. And I'm yeah. like, what? Yeah. Okay. So I just didn't tell anyone that I only went to one because I felt like. I felt bad about it. I was like, I don't, I don't want to seem like, oh, well, I only went to one. So, yeah. because it really was like, I knew in that moment, I knew when I made it to the end and all of these extremely talented people around me were like getting cut. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's like, something's because, going on here. Well, it was so ma- Like you were so matched with that. At like, the time. At the time. Yeah. Like it was just so, it was meant to be part of your story. It was meant to be part of your journey. Like it just was like everything conspired to just make right. it like a open the gates here you go here you go like floodgates yeah. open and it's just easy yeah like, when things are easy like that that's when you know it's yep. like okay this is meant to be part of the path when it's not it's like okay there's a roadblock for some reason like today when we were having technical difficulties you were yeah. like okay well now i'm wondering why we're having so many problems yeah, and like we've never had this issue before where like, our microphone just plugs in, it yep. goes, we press record, yep. we go. And, like, we tried to start this episode three or four times before it would go, and it's yeah. not on our normal recording device. It's, like, <laughs> very much, like, not our normal routine. Yeah. And it, but, it, like, this conversation is meant to unfold, yeah. and I always believe that. Like, yeah. I believe every time you make a wrong turn, it's because you're meant to. Yeah. Every time you're blocked from an opportunity, it's because you're meant to be rerouted. Like, yeah. rejection is a redirection. That whole thing. Like, I just, I believe that so much. And honestly, I've found so much freedom in that. Because yeah. I used to be a very much like, well, if I would have just done this one thing differently, maybe mm-hmm. everything would be different. And it's like, no. Yeah. Things happen because they happen because they're supposed to happen. Like, they're and, not. Yeah. Like, things happen exactly as they should. And taking rejection personally. Like, it's getting rejected lesson. by a person or by a company or whatever, not taking it personally, not feeling like, well, I must be inadequate. I must have done something wrong. When in reality, yeah. like, the whole concept is so silly. I know. Where like, do we get that from? I make this resume that has to be this absolute perfect certain way so that AI can read it for these hiring managers so that 715 people who are applying for the same job as me, I can somehow stand out amongst the crowd when it's all automated and ridiculous and they maybe don't even need to fill this position and it's this one thing and the salary is not even as good as you need it to be or whatever. And it's so silly to get caught up in this thing because yeah, like you can twist yourself into a pretzel and you are just one of 715 people who are all trying to do the same thing. It makes me laugh too. I'm like, when I get a little bit too meticulous about my resume, I'm like, you know, if I submitted it just as it is and this job is meant to be mine, it will not freaking matter what my resume says. The last job that I had, I got offered before they saw my resume. And I was like, oh, do you need to see that? Like, maybe that would be good. They're like, sure, send it over. Yeah. Because that job was meant to happen. Yeah. And it's that like silver platter energy. Like now the universe like, just like puts it on a plate and is like, would you like this? Maybe I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Just let it in. Okay. Yes or no. Okay. Exactly. So it's just, yeah, it's silly to get caught up in all of those details. And, you know, in my like current situation, obviously everyone has opinions and they're all like, well, maybe if you did this, maybe if you got this certification, maybe if you blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, or not. Yeah. Maybe I don't need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars getting a certification I don't even want because it's not a thing I'm interested in. Yeah. To get some job that I don't even want because it's not a thing I'm interested in. And like maybe, maybe, you know, not to say anything against any of those things, they're all great. And like, you know, continuing to learn and educate yourself and get better at what you do is great. But at the same time, right, it's not really going to make a difference if it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be, so. Yeah, and if you're getting, like, a certification just because you think you should and because you think that will be a way that money will come to you and you'll have, quote-unquote, financial security or whatever, but you don't, like, it's not actually aligned with your purpose or, like, your interests, right. like, you could get to the end of that certification and be like, 
shit, I hate this. Right. And, like, that's why, like, a lot of people, when they pick majors and they're Mm -hmm. like, I actually Mm -hmm. don't want to go to med school. I hate this. It's not, like, lighting me up at all. Yeah. And that's okay. Like, I just, I think it's funny and I think I'm very thankful that we finally are talking about this more openly and, like, in general and like we've gone through experiences like this it's like Mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything out of an obligation because I think it will be a means to an end yep like I want to do it because I think it will fulfill me and then the opportunities will then be magnetized to that energy yeah versus it's like the chasing versus the magnetizing concept yeah because if I'm chasing security right which again we always say like is false anyway or a false Premise. Yeah, I'm really leaning into that. Yeah, it's like, okay, well then, maybe things can show up in a different way that's just flowing and easy. Because mm-hmm. if things have shown up flowy and easy before, they can do it again. Right, there's evidence. Yeah. yeah. There's I love evidence collecting that that's evidence true. Me too, I need it. It helps. <laughs> it does. That's why that journal prompt was so helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I really think this was such a perfect conversation for the beginning of autumn because it's so like letting go, letting go, and embracing the possibility of change, even if you don't know what that looks like yet. Just knowing that it, the work is already done and it will come to you. Yeah, that's a, that's something I need to repeat to myself and that I need to hear and say as well. It's not something that I always believe, and I think that's another big important part of faith. Having faith is you. The doubting it is okay. I think yeah. I grew up like if I ever had a doubt, I felt guilty about it or ashamed about it. It's okay to doubt it. It's okay yeah. to hear it and go like, okay, but today it just really doesn't feel like that's happening. That's all right. It's still happening though. Like think about how many people have doubted their mm-hmm. biggest dreams and they mm-hmm. still achieve their biggest dreams. Yeah. Like you can still get what you want and doubt it. Yeah. I wouldn't stay there. I wouldn't like – Right. bathe in the doubt as, every as moment as, of every yeah. day but if yeah. it comes up and you're like having a day where you're like oh this is not gonna happen it's okay it doesn't mean it won't <laughs> I think as long as you can acknowledge that it's a doubt like yeah. I am having a moment of doubt be the observer <laughs> right yeah this is what's going on here yeah yeah and that's when you know like your faith is it's not weak it's just fluid like everything else like there are going to be moments where you feel really secure in it and confident and there are going to be moments where you doubt it and it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just, it's part, again, of being human. Yeah. We have moments of doubt and moments of security and moments in between. And that's normal. So. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. I feel energized. Yeah, I feel good. I feel, hmm. I feel hopeful. Yeah. Like there's a little, little sparkle. Yeah. That's just like off in the corner there. Yep. I like that. I like that too. Little glimmers. glimmers. I love that little thing. Yeah. Little glimmers. Yeah. Finding the glimmers. Mm-hmm. Have we talked about that on here? I think. The glimmers. I saw yeah. it on, well, it was Instagram because I don't have TikTok. The little like glimmer moments. Yeah. I think we've talked about them a million times. We just didn't call them that. Like when the sun comes through the trees or when you like, like Steven saw the first leaves changing and got so excited. Like those are the little glimmer moments. Yeah, so basically glimmers are the opposite of triggers, and yeah. glimmers make life worth living, and it's all the little stuff. Yeah. And I, I love that. I had a, yesterday my mom, oh, this was the thing I was going to tell you. <laughs> we were, this is a glimmer. We were, we went to dinner, and we were driving home, and at one point we are passing this, like, big open field, and my mom's, like, talking, I'm like, oh, Mom, look how beautiful the sky is right now, because the sun was setting, and the clouds just looked so cool, and the sky, was, the sun was, like, this, like, deep, like, orangey red, it was so pretty, and she goes, she looks and goes, pull over, <laughs> she just yells at me to pull over, I'm like, okay, <laughs> so I pull the car over, and we get out of the car, and we're, like, walking through this field, but there's, like, a telephone pole, and so she's trying to get past the telephone pole, so we can, like, see that, and I'm sure she, like, wanted to take a picture as well, but so we could, like, see the full expanse of yeah. it, she's like, hurry up, we're gonna it and she's running through this field oh to God. like not miss the sunset and I have this little like photo of her looking at it and it was it's so cool and it was one of those moments again that I was like this is so I'm not gonna cry oh my god it's living it's- <laughs> that I was like this is so I'm so gonna cry I was like this is so beautiful like yeah She's not gonna be here forever, but I'm so happy that like I'm sorry I'm on my period. You guys. <laughs> Don't apologize for that. Um, 
we can get emotional about anything. No, I'm apologizing for you having to listen to my crying voice, not for me on my period. But <laughs> it's like, this is so beautiful that, like, she had this little moment where, you know, she just was, like, present. And she, yeah. you know, was able to just be like, oh, you're right, it is. Pull over so we can, like, go really experience it together. And... I knew, like, in that moment, I was like, I'm going to remember this forever. Like, yeah. it was just so sweet and indulgent, which is not something she often does. Like, she doesn't self-indulge a lot. And she doesn't necessarily always let herself have those moments. And yeah. so I was just really happy to be a part of it. And I'm, like, actually really crying. <laughs> but it was a little glimmer. Yeah. And it was cool to see that in her because, again, like, we think of our parents as our parents and we forget that they're people. Yeah. And, like, you know, her inside her is still, like, a young, carefree person, too, who wants to find, like, little happy things every day. Yeah. And um, I'd like to think that I, like, help bring that out of her. <laughs> yeah. But it was very cool to see her like that. Yeah. Just, like, carefree and leaning into the moment. I love that. It was very cool. So, we sorry all... for crying. Wow. Apparently, it's just going to be in every episode. I today. love it. No, and I think that's energy that why wouldn't we want to embrace that and cultivate that in any yeah. any opportunity that we at can. any age and maybe it's not every day maybe it's like or maybe it is like it, it, it there's no rules to it like right. and it's it's like when life gives you the opportunity be open to that right like with open arms because you could literally have looked down on your phone and missed that or you yeah. could hopefully not because i was driving but not yeah you. Yeah. Whoever, like, the situation is. Like, you yeah. could drive by a sunset and not even notice it. Mm-hmm. Or you can be open to that and embrace it with open arms. Mm-hmm. Like, there's always those two options. Yeah. And I think that's really, like, that's exciting. Like, we can be in the driver's seat of life and decide how we want to take in these moments. Yeah. And, again, it's really about the perspective and, like, deciding that. Yeah. Like, do I want to embrace this or do I have to rush off to the next thing? Right. So. Right. It's just, life is full of possibilities. Yeah. I feel like I want to go running through some leaves now, like a child. I think that's probably a good idea. <laughs> that's the thing. I was like, what's the fall version of this? Yes. It's um, playing in the leaves. Yeah. The the that's a metaphor. Yeah. Just play in the leaves. Yeah. Stop and watch the sunset. Mm-hmm. But that was that was a little glimmer moment that happened, and I wanted to share it because it was really beautiful. So. I love that. I think that is just the perfect thing to leave off with today Yay. to embrace the childlike wonder. Wow! It's, Happy October, friends! Yes, welcome to a new month, new season of life. We're starting the best months of the year. If you are a October, November, December girly like me, I would include September in there too. Freaking love it! I am be excited. Definitely an autumn girly. I mean, I'm a summer girly first, but I'm an au- when autumn comes around, though, I am like all in, uniquely all in and excited about it. There is some like deeper part of my inner child that connects with autumn. So, yes. I'm very inner child's activated. Inner We're child ready. Activate. <laughs> Go, autumn. go enjoy. Enjoy anything. Your pumpkin spice lattes, your pumpkin hot apple breads, cider, hot apple cider, butternut squash soup, whatever <laughs> you want. Just go love and it. indulge and love life. Find those glimmers and we'll talk to you next month. Bye. Outro, take one. Thank you for joining us. Oh, hold on. Outro, take two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Rediscover. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that button and join the Rediscover fam. Come back on the first Tuesday of every month for brand new episodes. If you're like us and you have opinions about everything, leave us a review on Apple or Spotify. Your positivity inspires our creativity and we love hearing from you. Follow us on Instagram at jessicafay 508 and positively.kristen. And check out Jess's blog at theroadjustraveledwith1l.com. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.